Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our beautiful listeners at home. Uh, it's Luke Toki and David Janay, and wherever you are listening to this podcast, whether you're on the toilet, walking the pram with your daughter in it, or on the train, we are bringing the heat this morning. Do you like that? <laughs> that was intense, thanks, dude. That yeah, was pro- yeah, yeah, <laughs> I walked yeah, in here. Yeah. I'm barely awake and it's like straight into it. I'm impressed with that intro. Yeah, I thought, yeah, well, I had a lot of time riding on the bike. Uh, you think I, yeah, I think of, stuff? yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, welcome, everybody. We have a big um, podcast today. We have yeah, a few good. guests, which we'll uh, welcome very shortly. But let's talk about what's been happening this week. What has been happening this week? I don't know. There is a war going on. Oh. And if you haven't turned on the TV, you don't have any access to the news. Obviously, it's a very bad situation over the other side of the world right now. So bad, dude. I I watched this video last night or yesterday. Mm. Um, They had captured a Russian soldier and the Ukrainians were ringing their parents, their 20-year-old's parents, to say, do you know your son is in Ukraine right now trying to take over... Our what did country. the parents say? They were like, "What? Why are you not at home working?" Like, and they were, and then the dad, because the dad answered, he was like, "How are you the only one that's been captured? Like, what's going on?" And his dad, yeah, the son's telling him, he's like, "Yeah, I'm in Ukraine. I've been captured." He thinks he's, you know, probably partying somewhere in Russia. And then the funny, oh. the bad thing, but the funny thing was, his dad goes, like yells out to his wife like you need to sort this out like so he rings calls the mum over like mum you know oh, she good. comes over and tells him off like legit war just shows that it doesn't matter where you are like mum and dad are at home always stressing and you could be in another country like fighting bro right, that's wild eh? yeah it was a pretty crazy video just scary times man yeah has putin not got enough stuff like, the <sighs> dude has so much money he can do whatever he wants. It's like he's got this video game that's 98% complete. Well, do you know... And it's just bugging him, that 2%. <laughs> so nah, he, i got to take it. So he's just supposedly activated some sort of nuclear... I've seen it. Dude. Yeah, which is like, that's worst case scenario. So, right, listen to this. Now, this is my theory, is he's always wanted to make Mother Russia mm. one again. I'm thinking he's sick. He's ill... He's only been told he's got not, no, sh- not. not yeah not long to live, yeah. and he's like, well, this is my moment. Really? Like, I, well, why would look, you I could be completely like wrong. Well, because he wants to, like, say for instance, people have this. Well, I think greed is a, a big, you know. Yeah, he thinks Hitler's part. a really chill guy. Well, maybe I'm thinking that he wants to sit there and go, "This is what my legacy is. I got a oh, year dude, left. Worst legacy, maybe I could be worst. wrong." Yeah, and that's what I think is he's thought it's going to be a good thing, bring Russia all and be the creator, and it's going to be. Oh, it's like watching your kid get bullied in school and you just can't do anything about it. And then that nuke button. It wasn't like he was going to be like, we'll put, uh, I'll box, I will box the mayor of Kiev. And then he found out it was Klitschko. Oh, I'm going to just have to, it's nukes. <laughs> no, no, backtrack real quick. Oh. Klitschko was like the heavyweight champion of the world at one point. Yeah, have you seen now the Now he's photos? the mayor. Oh, yeah, dude, the mayor, and now badass. he's fighting. Dude, I really hope they come through this. Oh. I'm, I'm not. That's like Mike there. Tyson mm. fighting a war. Well, he made mayors cool. Yeah. Because always mayors are usually like, how's our mayor? Yeah. <laughs> Who have we well, got? What they Who's say? our mayor in Perth? <laughs> okay, um, we have, oh, Basil. Oh, Basil. <laughs> he does a radio show as well. <laughs> does he? Yeah, remember when Basil. Right. This is what I propose. All the mayors around the world, we have a boxing tournament. Do you know what? Well, how do you, you reckon Basil well, would do all right? <laughs> he could throw He's a bit of a string being bad. Well, you think know, about you it, right? So they're, yeah. they're president or whatever, yeah. prime minister, president, I can't remember. Um, he used to be a com- uh, co- uh, comedian. Right. Suppose he, and now he's over there and he's decided not to leave and he's told everyone to fight for Ukraine and fight to yeah, the death. An out. absolute like like inspiration for a leader oh, yeah. of a country. That's how you do it. Do you reckon ScoMo would chuck on you know, the old baggy green, you reckon? And do you reckon uh, do you reckon um while he's doing it, do you reckon ScoMo and Basil would chuck on the baggy green to fight for us and say 
you know, or do you think he would be off to Bali somewhere? Oh, probably, you know, oh, it's just bad timing. So. Just bad timing again. Okay, we need better. We need some badass politicians. Yeah. Why doesn't Australia have like Bush? We need some oh, badass oh, 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 politicians. Getting in, um, dude, sign me up. I'm telling you, I should run for you, Labor. You I, I'd it. stay. I had this. Uh, I said this to the guys at work. Yes, I'd be like, dude, I know I would stay. Like it just, it's my mentality. I'd be like, let's go, let's bring it. Let, I'd be those three guys on the island going, fuck you, Russian ship. Or do you hear about oh, that? Dude, that was crazy. And then bomb the crowd. Well, they reckon they could be still alive. I hope so. I hope so. That was brutal. It's insane. I, I just think it's funny as well that he's like going, uh, no, we're going into, we got to take out these neo Nazis. Mm. Like, what did he not realize that like social media exists, the internet exists? We can actually—he's like operating that old school. He thinks a magazine's going to run an article or something. Like, dude, we know hey, I, there's no Nazis there. I, the president is Jewish. So Russia's being attacked by everyone now. He's got anonymous. He's got all. Everyone's kind of mm. Tesla's trying to help him. Elon Musk is doing Scarlet Starling. Last thing I know, worst thing probably for the Russians I think mm. ever at all. Porn tube has shut down as well for oh, any well, Russians. Boring, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that'd be it. That's it. Surely that'd be close. <laughs> like retreat, retreat. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, so. Well, hey, we've, we've opened on serious issues, uh, yeah. but this this podcast <laughs> wants to focus on yeah. serious issues. But speaking of serious issues, you know, we promised having guests in, and I think we've actually got two really good ones today. Amazing guests. Uh, let's welcome them in. Should we do a bit of dum 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 dum? Or should we do a what what what? Surely it's like a few more what what what's what, 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 in there. <laughs> All right, let's address that. Last week, if you listen to last last week, Sam, too many what 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 cuts. We are aware of that. We yeah, we're going to pull so. back on the what 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 cuts. And, um, it was creative. Yeah, yeah. Control. Yeah. <laughs> we'll Donna got a little bit uh, heavy handed. Heavy handed. <laughs> They're all passing blame in the booth now. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I didn't put in the what cuts. Someone. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, she can't oh. hear. Well, we're talking. We're talking plenty of crap about you. <laughs> Get a headset. But anyway, today we have the lovely Dr. Adelaide Withers with us today. Yep. And she is a respiratory. Res- I <laughs> you stuffed oh, it I up. Stuffed I it up. <laughs> You're the one supposed Pediatric, to be teaming up. Uh, respiratory. 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 Specialist. So she uh, has come on to keep the boys in line. Mm. And on top of And make sure we can say respiratory. Yeah. And obviously to probably fact check us. Uh, And secondly, um, we have Nathan Charles, which is, I think, I'm pretty sure is the only sports person to play at an international level, played ex-Wallaby, uh, and have cystic fibrosis. He is uh, a very good human. I've, I actually met him uh, quite some time ago, and we've stayed in contact. And so, I'm, a pleasure to have him back on here. And mate, cystic fibrosis, of course, pretty close to your heart. Yeah. So, you tell us a little bit about that for people who don't know. I'm sure most people listening to this. Are yeah. So, so it. this month, this uh, quarter, uh, my daughter Maddie has been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. It's been uh it's quite public you know she's pretty much grown up in the media now uh but she's the ambassador for the perth children's hospital and the perth children's hospital uh they were my charity when i played big brother and when i won big brother they obviously were the beneficiaries of that as well and so i've stayed very close to them they've um, been extremely accommodating uh to my family they've well, protect well they have saved my daughter's life and they'll continue to manage us as parents to make sure we're giving her the best care and on top of it um just give her the best care so very very uh amazing well i think any hospital of any state is the the heartbeat of especially the children's the state. hospital yeah, yeah of children's course. hospital is so important man well, everyone's yeah. had a kid that well, not, not everyone, but a lot of people have had kids that have had to use the children's hospital. Exactly. My son's appendix burst. Yeah. And, and saved his life. Yeah, you always know someone that has a, a kid or a friend or a family member that has had to use the hospital. It's a great it's, you don't need the hospital until you need it. And it's only when you need it that you go, oh my God, we are so lucky to have an amazing hospital. So 
Without further ado, we would like to welcome oh. it. Is the door locked? Is is locked. It, I like that you I, 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 like, I like there's yeah. like circus intros. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, you need to start juggling. juggling. Oh, God. I, so when I was a kid, I actually got told I'd be pretty good at, um, it was called spruiking. Yeah. So I was spruiking for a uh, meat department. Mm. And that I would go, good morning, customers. Welcome to Action Whippers. Yeah. Come on down and get your silly sausages. They're on sale for... <laughs> You're you know, real yeah. regular Robert yeah, Williams. I was, yeah, well, I just yeah, really but, did yeah. well. And then um, one time a spruker that was just shopping, maybe must have got some eggs and milk, he walks up and goes, who just said that stuff on that on the spruik? Yeah. You know? And I didn't even know it was called spruik. I just thought it was me just grabbing the mic thinking I was the rock inside the shopping center. And he goes, I'm a professional spruker. Mm. He goes, oh, I thought that was really good, and you should look at that as a full time oh, gig. I've got a lot to answer for this. Guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him here. Uh, here we go. I'll let you. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Give us a circus one. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a circus <laughs> one. Okay. It's about to get super. Well, no, nah, just joking. <laughs> welcome, Adelaide. Welcome, Nathan. Thanks for coming in. Um, obviously, before we get uh, into it, I've got something very. Um, What's uh, what, uh, very serious to talk about? Did anyone watch maths last night? <laughs> can't, no. say, can't say I did. No. Yeah, I did not. Yeah, yeah no, either, I either. All right. So, um, yeah, welcome, come on. We'll talk about. Oh my god, I just, I did, maybe didn't. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Let's talk about cystic fibrosis. Let's talk about how. How old are you now, Nath? Uh, thirty-three. Okay, so you got two more years, and then you. Because isn't it fifty percent of people with cystic fibrosis roughly potentially pass away before thirty five? Is that the stacks? Yeah, stats? It, it's it's changing. It is changing. Um, so now people are tending to live a lot longer. Yeah. Mostly because of the new medications we've got, but also, and you'd probably know this because you've been alive for thirty three years. Like the mm. care we give <laughs> people. Yes, so you probably know better than I do. You're a doctor. <laughs> but the, You're the, the, the sort of medical care we have to offer now is very different to sort of 10, 15 years ago. Um, so people are definitely living longer, and I've certainly met people in their fifties and sixties, which is pretty amazing. Mm. Well, I'm glad someone's being optimistic about it. Using yeah. like, oh, yeah. you've got two years left. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you've got just two years. Just, like, just for life you. drop. Oh, I'll send over yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, no, I, was, I didn't realise that's where we were going with this. I'm going to give you a pat on the I was, back. Yeah. I was wondering why they put the timer up on this clock. <laughs> <laughs> It's not. That's, that's actually my lifetime, yeah. so it, it is like you should be counting it. down. Yeah. You should be counting down. I've wasted thirty minutes. <laughs> got two years left and doing thirty minutes of this crap. Yeah. Well, ha- like obviously, um, exercise we I think is always going to be a big mm-hmm. uh, thing that you know kind of uh, helps you live longer in any aspect of life, but. Being a, uh, you know, you, you're looking fit right now. You know, oh, thanks, you, yeah, have you been yeah, training? Yeah, like, uh, I've done a little bit of training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you're not watching this on YouTube and listening at home, Nathan's yoked. Because, because what? Pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like getting you the two years to live thing. I thought we were going to up So, so um, I always, uh, one of the questions me and my wife always wondered was physio, Take away medications. Say, for instance, no medications. We're still in the caveman days, Hold on, right? Before we go down this route, all right, because as someone who doesn't know much about cystic fibrosis, can you guys just give me kind of like a cliff notes on what it is? Yeah, for people yeah, who yeah, have true. no clue, yeah. because we're about to go into some yeah, deep true. stuff, deep water. I don't know. Nath, do you want to? Um, well, you're the doctor, so <laughs> I mean, what do you go for? Well, maybe, uh, maybe I'll give a little explanation, yeah, and then maybe you can yeah. sort of talk about what it's like to live with CF. Yeah, I like it. Um, so cystic fibrosis is an inherited condition, and it causes problems with really sticky mucus in the lungs and in your gastrointestinal system, your gut. So the two main problems people with CF have if they get really sticky mucus in their lungs is they get chest infections. Um, so it causes problems with chest infections and over time that can lead to damage to the lungs. The other problem a lot of people with cystic fibrosis have is they can't digest the fat in their food. So they have to take enzymes every time they have a meal mm-hmm. to help them digest the, the fat in their food. And that can cause lots of problems with their gut. So they're the two main things that happen when you've got CF. And when, what age is that starting to manifest and becoming quite bad? Is it from birth it can be a really it, bad issue? Or look, just... it's, it's really variable. Mm. And um, 
One thing that's really exciting is that a lot of the research we've done in WA has shown that in some kids, even if we do a scan really young, like three, four months of age, sometimes we can actually see they've already had damage to their airways from infection. Mm -hmm. So we tend to be pretty aggressive about treating from really early on. Mm -hmm. That being said, I know kids who are 10, 15 years old who have pretty much a normal looking scan of their lungs. So there's a huge variation mm -hmm. within people who have cystic fibrosis at how young they start to have problems. Um, and there's lots of things we don't understand about why someone might have worse lung disease. Interesting. And, and what's that been like, Nate? Like growing up with it and dealing with it, and you've had a full professional career as an athlete. Really good question. Actually, something that I get asked quite often, and I don't really know how to answer it because I don't know any different. Mm. Mm. It's not like you know you have an injury in the rugby field and you knew what it was like before that injury versus what it's like post, like having reconstructions or whatnot. But with CF, you're born with it. So um, from an airport. Three months of age, I think I was diagnosed. So from ever I could remember, it was always medications, nebulizers, you know, exercising and um, trying to live a healthy lifestyle. So this is just my life and I don't know what it's like without it. So um, it's a question I can't really answer. Mm. Are you still having to deal with treatment stuff at the moment? Like yeah, yeah, I take um, a fair few medications every day. So yeah, uh, I've got a raft of pills in the, in the wardrobe and um, every time I travel um, I, my suitcase is always easy to pick out because the one that rattles <laughs> <laughs> so you know what that's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so um, with that is uh, do you find there's any changes if you don't take your medications like do you actually feel it yeah absolutely and you know when I don't look after myself or I might have a big weekend or whatever um, you sort of it probably takes me a bit longer just to recover Simple cold um, can knock you about, and then it's just a bit of a snowball effect. So those underlying chest infections then sort of become a bit more apparent. Mm. Um, so yeah, and you do you do feel it at times, and you have good days, you have bad days, and mm. you just roll with the punches. Yeah, I um I was talking about before um about the physio side of things. Um, you know the medications obviously there to I guess you know help get rid of mucus, help your stomach health, and all that type of stuff. But physio is always something that we get uh, really drilled into us, and it's patting on the back. Uh, you know, we really get taught how to pat on the chest and pat on the back and stuff because they want to make sure the parents are really sticking to that. Um, but with salt water, going down the beach, trampolines and everything, I always tried to work out what was the best type of physio. Because say, for instance, weight training, running, cardio, like, Obviously, opening your lungs up as much as possible. If you're training weights all the time, I don't feel like, you know, you, like it, it works as better as running, but do you have any? Look, I think there's lots of different kinds of physio. So in the younger kids, obviously, who aren't up and running around, um, the physio we do is things like patting on the chest because that's trying to help move that sticky, infected mucus out of their lungs because mm. they've got no other way of doing that. Um, but with the kids who are a bit older, they still need to do things that are really targeted at moving that mucus. Mm -hmm. But you know, as you said, your general health, exercising is good for everyone, right? Yeah. Um, and particularly things that um, take a lot of, sort of lung capacity, things like swimming is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. We love getting the little kids to trampoline because they love it and it's fun. Because yeah. the other side of the physio is that's usually the treatment that I've you would probably agree that's usually the treatment that people like doing the least because it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. it's not fun um and you know it can often be really hard for families you know we've got some families that have more than one child who's got cf and sometimes especially if someone's unwell it can be up to sort of two three hours a day of doing airway clearance wow. so i mean that's it and that's it's every day consuming. it's not like it's yeah. not like you have you know weekends off it's every day so it's a huge amount to ask people and Talking to about do. circuses before, um, I was actually going to go down the circus route as well. Oh, was I became so good at blowing up balloons as a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Balloon animals. Balloon so. animals, yeah. they're the best. So that was obviously, <laughs> you know, as, as uh, Adelaide just said, it's probably, the, I think the best kind of physio is a physio that you're probably not thinking about and you're just doing it. So your mum and dad always had these little tricks when I was a kid, um, uh, blowing up balloons. Mm. Uh, they wanted to get me into wind instruments. Yep. And I brought home mm. a, a, a trumpet one weekend. And it lasted the weekend before dad just said, no. Nah. <laughs> I don't that, care if you got CF or not. not. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> drums are not good physio. Yeah. So. CF or not, buddy. You dodged a bullet there. I you? blew the hell out of that thing that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> said, nah, sorry, mate. Get back to the balloons. That's quieter. So, yeah. it's um, But obviously, as you get older, like I find things and exercise 
for me, whenever I do talk, it's about exercise, the best medicine, I think physically, but also mentally, it just makes you feel better about um, your situation. Life, yeah. So yeah. That's what's got me through, I think, a lot, and that's what, what I um, try and convey to people as well. Yeah. As um, so, um, how long have you been in your industry for? Like, so it... I have worked. Well, I actually worked at PMH before we went to the new hospital. So I've worked there since two thousand and six, oh, wow. and I've been a respiratory specialist since two thousand and ten. Yeah. Um, and a part of the cystic fibrosis team that whole time. Have you seen some cases that you know? Make, like must be hard industry to work with because I think like breathing just in general when someone can't breathe mm. but it's still very scary able yeah. to walk around it's um absolutely and I think like it's such a privilege to work with the kids and the families that we do work with because mm. you know, breathing is like the most fundamental part of your life like if you can't breathe yeah. you know you can't do anything yeah. so it's it's awesome that we get to do things to help people breathe better and improve their lung health. And that's one of the reasons that um, foundations like the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and the PCH Foundation are so important because they actually fund us to do research to find out how can we actually do these treatments better, what works and what doesn't. Like, what's the point of me making someone do three hours of airway clearance a day if it's not actually going to make any difference to their, you know, to their respiratory health? But we don't know that stuff without doing research. Yeah. One, one of the things we got told is, you know, at the moment our daughter's we were about to turn three. Uh, so it's quite easy to manage her because, you know, we give her medicines and, and stuff like that. And she's super cute, by yeah. the way. Oh, very, I very cute. Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, yeah. She's big personality too. She, um, but we always get told around teenagers, you know, when you start to oh. rebel, um, that's probably <laughs> parents and hospitals' biggest fears in those years because once you damage your lungs, it's it's irreparable. So, and you lose that percent, you know, percentage yeah. of airway or whatever. COVID now as well is another thing. Have you been worried about that? Oh, personally, when it first started, um, yeah, I was quite concerned. Mm -hmm. But um, I know the last couple of years, not having seen family, because all my family live on the East Coast, I think I've sort of now got to a stage where, you know, I just need to see my family and be around that. So it's affected my mental uh, health yeah. at times, so mm -hmm. I think. But yeah, it's, a, it's, it's that balancing act of, Having that support network and also um, from your health standpoint too. But I'm, I'm listening to the docs, triple vax, you know, try and do all the right things. But <laughs> yeah. what more can you do now? You've got to get on with it at some point. Exactly. I think we're, we've talked about that. Um, so we, uh, so obviously being uh, vaxxed, having COVID, because our daughter, so we're obviously trying to make sure that it doesn't go, you know, yeah. back home. That's what our, our biggest thing. But then again, it's exactly the same as you. There's so many other um, aspects of life that you need to worry about, you know, like your mental health and certain things that I feel like um, you can't always just worry that, you know, she's got cystic fibrosis about me bringing it home. I'm like, I still got to work. I still got to, you know. Life goes on. Yeah, life goes on, you know. And um, I always was wondering how, you know, as an adult, how, how you were worried because I can't ask my daughter how she's worried. It's more just as a parent. So when you have it yourself, that's... Um, you know, how are you feeling about it, so. And I think, I think most, most people in WA have done the right thing and gotten vaccinated. And I, I totally get that people have concerns and worries mm. about it, but I try and pitch it as, well, actually, let's try and protect the people who can't protect themselves. Like someone like Maddie, she's too young to be vaccinated. Mm. So the best thing you can actually do is help protect those really vulnerable kids, mm. um, people who can't get vaccinated, like people having chemotherapy, they can't be vaccinated. So even if you don't want to do it for yourself, you should do it for someone else to protect them. Well, we're at ninety-eight percent, so yeah. yeah, good job on that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else was? Uh, so what? What have you been doing since the last time I saw you? It's um, been a while. It's, it's been a few years. It's been a while. Um, yeah. Wow. I don't you, know. Are you, you've been speaking. You've been yeah doing, yeah. A lot of, doing a lot of talking. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy that. I started um, the role of CEO of Rugby WA about twelve months ago. So I'm sort of back in the sport. That's that's sort of, awesome. Yeah, giving Look, me that's everything. hell good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good on you. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. So it's been a yeah, challenging, um, challenging couple of years just with the transition. Obviously, everyone thinks it's uh, you know live a great life, lived a great lifestyle playing in professional sport, but the transition is very tough. Um, whether you're ready for it or not, you don't know when it's going to come. And I was fortunate that I uh, educated myself, got experience, networked, and did all those sort of things. And you know, within three years, I'm now in that role. So I've done a fairly successful transition. But it's still still not easy. But yeah, life's good. Because um, after sport, you know, 
people are like, well, what do I do after sport? Especially if you have made sport your whole life and you've got to a point where you are, I can guarantee you probably got some friends that are probably still working out what they're doing after the game. Um, so for you to find like you know your way and still be in the sport, it's fucking great. No, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, yeah great. it's like people do. Um, and you leave battered and bruised, and some yeah. people broken. And I was medically retired as well, so um, you know, like I said, those things come without you knowing. Mm. And uh, but you know, I wouldn't change a thing. It's the sport has given me everything, and obviously, it's a big thing. We talk about health. That's sort of given me my my outlet. That's essentially been my physio for my entire life. That substitutes all the exercises I've done. So I got a question. Are the Wallabies going to beat the All Blacks this year? You know, <laughs> are, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Are we going to kick hit, their ass? You heard it here first. Yeah. I, I was going to say you got a great voice for speaking, Dave. <laughs> all the bad side effects. But so yeah, one good side effect is his voice. Yeah, you got a sexy right? voice. You know when you get a cold. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And everything's yeah. shit and it's just horrible, but then you kind of wake up the next day and your voice is like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, yeah. yeah. He's got the speaking voice. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Right. The low uh, love song dedication. Yeah. 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 Brought to you by. Yeah. Uh, we, we should, should have him do, do, do the intro. We can do something yeah. together. I reckon you can yeah. spook and then I'll bring it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I'll just be the starter. Nathan, yeah. He's yeah. yeah. going to take it home. I'll yeah. bring it He's going to bring it home. Yeah. Um, guys, it's a special week, though, for the hospital, right? Coming up. Should we talk about that a little bit? You want I to explain what's happening? Because the whole reason you guys are in today, obviously Luke's connection, um, but it's a big week for the hospital coming up. What's going on? It is. So we're going to be um, launching our campaign for the, mm-hmm. for the PCH Foundation um, and they fundraise for um, all of the different sort of areas at PCH. And it's really important to us because they give us funding for things like research so we can actually treat our patients better because we can't improve things if we don't do the research to do it. They also fund things like equipment, um, which is really essential, not just for kids with cystic fibrosis, but all sorts of medical conditions. Um, And they can provide some assistance with funding for things like care in the home. There's all sorts of amazing stuff that they do, but we can't do it without money. And and we totally rely on people's donations. Is Is the government giving enough money to the hospital? Oh, look. There's never, there's never enough money (laughs) from the government. And, you know, it's really hard because you work in your area. So I'm like, respiratory conditions. 5.5 billion right now. So I feel like. Yeah. Like we, we we just, we we need, we need more. We always need more. And, you know, we're so lucky to have this beautiful new hospital. Um, But. It is an amazing. It is pretty awesome. Mm. But, you know, we also need funding for things like being able to open more beds and, you know, things have really changed with COVID. We've had to change the entire layout of a lot of the hospital mm. and we're really worried about what's going to happen when people start getting sick with COVID and can't come in. So any funding at the moment is going to be really Babies essential. don't stop get, getting born. No, well, this, I think yeah. a lockdown actually people got a bit busy because they had nothing else to do. So <laughs> there has actually yeah, been an there's... increase <laughs> in, in births. Since, uh... Is there a study on that? Is yeah, that, is that it's, true, it's true, it's yeah. true. I swear. What um, the hell is <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't quote me on that, but um, yeah, yeah. One, one of my friends is not yeah, There was a snap yeah. lockdown right here. Yeah, yeah, we can, uh, <laughs> people were listening and they can speak. They were <laughs> what? 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 So we have to think our, ooh, we have to think. We have to thank yeah. our digital partner, Co-Digital. The H is silent. C-O-H. Digital. They're presenting this podcast for us. Yeah, design, build, and grow your digital future. So that's your digital future. If you want to make sure you've got a very bright-looking future, you need to go to Co Digital, the digital future specialists. A lung on a chip. Do you know about that? Did lung. you say a chimp or uh, a chimp? <clears throat> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, got you. I just see if you were like listening. <laughs> just, um, a lung on a chip. Uh, chip on a lung. Sorry. The other way around. Chip, chip on, a on a lung. Do you know anything about that research? Oh. So there's this oh, thing. Look at me, Adelaide. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Fine. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you probably do your research on Google, but <laughs> if you just it's listen to this, to you. <laughs> Oh, there's oh. some sort of research with chip on a lung technology that are helping people with uh, respiratory. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to know well, a bit what more. Is it about it. I'm not too sure. It's some Elon Musk stuff. That's what I'm well, thinking. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Google yeah. after this and see I need, if I'm going to post it. I'll post it on a post. Yeah, Adelaide does know. She just doesn't want Yeah, she's uh, like, yeah, it's, like it's new tech. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Some new I'm, technology I'll have to, give up has my to be released. Yeah. If, I, <laughs> if I let you know. But you know what? There is there is some really exciting research happening even at um, Perth Children's Hospital at the moment. And one of the new things that's happening is they're looking at new ways of treating certain bacteria which cause infections. So one of the problems with people who've got cystic fibrosis is they get infections with certain bacteria, which are really hard to treat. Mm. And sometimes we actually run out of antibiotics and we're like, we literally have no antibiotics we can use. So we're not able to really treat them effectively. And there's some really exciting research going on with different ways of using and sort of repurposing these antibiotics to make them more effective against Mm. these bacteria. So that's one of the biggest things that's sort of happening. The how far has the treatment come over the years like since you've been involved with it you've seen it it's, really it's been massive yeah. so like every time i meet a family who've just had a baby who's been diagnosed with cf uh, we do what's called the sort of new diagnosis talk where mm-hmm. we talk to them about what cf is and mm-hmm. i always say to them the conversation i'm having with you now is so different to the conversation i would have had you know five ten years ago because the treatments we have now are so different so we're so lucky that most people with a certain mutation can start using some medications from the age of two, Mm. um, which really do things like improve lung function, um, they can improve your gut health as well. And we didn't have them available sort of five years ago. Even the antibiotics we have, uh, we have a lot more to pick from stronger antibiotics than we had maybe 10, 15 years ago. So it has really come a long way, which is really Would you say that Perth is potentially one of the most leading Absolutely. In the world uh, for research and to you know yeah. f- to be a cystic fibrosis, right. um, absolutely. Kid in, like in it's you know if you have CF, Perth is a pretty good place to be. Yeah. Um, our centre is known throughout the world. We're really leaders in CF research, um, and we know we've got the best health outcomes in the country because we all compare our data. So mm. you know it's a good place to live. If you've got CF. my daughter was put on a trial, so um, one of the things is they. Once you're a n- newborn, they didn't know whether to put them on antibiotics too early. Like there was some three months waiting period, mm-hmm. so they asked to put her on a trial where they wanted to start it pretty much from the get go. Yep. And so she was put on that because they feel like it's um, beneficial. Yeah. Uh, because as you said, there's probably some babies or whatever that are three months deep. They've already got lung issues. Um, okay. We found that that was great. It's worked. Um, we had our first. Um, oh, What's where they blow up the lungs? I forget. Oh, the, uh, the CT scan and the bronchoscopy yeah, bronco- where we look yeah, down with a yeah, little camera. Yeah, so she's had a few of them now. Yep. First one came up clear. We were like, no, oh, I actually good. did her first bronchoscopy. Did you? I'm probably not supposed to oh, say that you? on air, oh, but yeah, I did. That's, oh, wow. <laughs> we can cut that. We can. Yeah, no, no. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> We've got this really cool thing where we go, wow. <laughs> 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 as long as you don't have the the woke button moment, <laughs> like oh no, <laughs> yeah, we press the button and you fall down and <laughs> escape. Um, and so the first one I remember, it came back quite clear and we're quite happy. Mm-hmm. And then the second one, they said that her, oh, pretty much a hundred percent of her lungs had now started with the white pus mm-hmm. or the white. Uh, secretion is yep. it um, and then she had an E. coli infection but they, they said it kind of cleared up I think they had to smash it with antibiotics but um, and we was like she's uh, I would say in a bubble like we mm-hmm. don't she's not in daycare you know we don't do any of that um, stuff but she uh, when the E. coli situation happened we were kind of like kicking ourselves like how the hell did this happen and the only thing we could think of is maybe taking her from the public pool you know yeah. Uh, where, where do you reckon she would have picked that up? So most of the time when people get infections um, in their lungs, it's usually from bacteria in the environment. And yeah. most people who don't have cystic fibrosis just aren't vulnerable to getting infections with those bacteria because the mucus in our lungs helps prevent infections. But if you've got CF, your your lungs can't fight off those infections. So you're and you can pick things up from the environment around you. It doesn't mean people are not cleaning their houses. Mm. They've gone somewhere dirty. Like, it's just bacteria. Yeah, it's everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's almost impossible to protect people's lungs with CF from getting those sorts of infections. So it wouldn't have been anything that you guys did. It wouldn't have been because she went to a pool. You know, it would have mm. been one of those things that she's vulnerable just- to it. Do you, you get know. a sense now that Luke is using this as a session to get free? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I got you here. I got this rash. <laughs> oh, my God. It's driving me it's crazy. It's called chip it along. Yeah. 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 So, no, no, chip it along. Chip it along. 
<laughs> I said lung on a chip, didn't I? Yeah. Like yeah. Lung on a chip. I, I thought you said lung on a yeah. chip, but I'm like, are they growing some weird monkey lungs? Yeah. I'm not aware Adelaide of Adelaide walks out, we were here to talk about the fundraiser. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, so, a lot of the research they're doing um, is in what we call the, the CF pig, because pigs actually have really similar airway properties to humans. So most of the research that they do with animals is actually with pig lungs. Oh, so, wow. so not chimps. Or yeah, chimps. wow, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. He's, he's going to be like, <laughs> I've got balls that have swelled up like oranges. So what do you know about that? <laughs> That was our wait, first wait, 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 we can talk about that yeah. after. Yeah. I am a children's doctor. Um, <laughs> I'll take it serious again. What's it like, this is for you, Lucky, what's it like when you first kind of hear that your daughter, your newborn, has got CF? Like, when you're I, sitting down uh, having that conversation. Well, so I, because um, she was born uh, with, God, I'm well, like Her gut was blocked? Yep, yeah, blocked. So... Uh, I always have trouble with this because back in the day I'd say it a hundred times, but I haven't had to say it a thousand times since. Um, she had to have a catheter, uh, not catheter, sorry, yeah, uh, a little cost stomach, me bag, cost yeah. me bag. Yeah, so for me when it happened and they, Mary actually told me first and goes, mm. um, she's got CF because they've told me. And I said, well, where's the paperwork? Like, show me that she's got it. And she goes, oh, well, they haven't, like, they haven't got the paperwork yet. They're still waiting for the test to come back. And I was like, well, I'm not going to accept it until, like, mm -hmm. the paperwork says it because, like, people sometimes are wrong, you know? And I didn't even know what CF was at that time still. Long story, they got pulled us in the room and, you know, gave us the chat and said, well, you know, medications are so much better. Can we put her on the trial? And that's when I accepted it. For me, it was... I'm kind of happy-go-lucky. Like, I always think, like, the best. Like, even when you sit there and think, well, she could be in hospital a lot through her life, I'm just like, well, I'll be right there holding her hand. Like, um, I think life's hard, and I think, you know, everyone has their challenges. I, I, I've said it a thousand times with um, our kids is they got, they're got very lucky. The reason why is because they have a mum and dad that love them, and they're going to be with them through their highs and through their lows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so... With her dealing with that and, you know, me making sure she's having a good time all the time, um, I think she's she's lucky in that respect. So I um, I just do what I'm told by the doctors, you know. I, that's I really do. Like, I just do what I'm told. And if uh, I'm not doing what I'm told, Mary's going to tell me what, what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and she has access to a fantastic <laughs> facility at Perth Children's Hospital. She does. Right? But Mary is, <laughs> you know, she's the rock. Um, you know, I just kind of help wherever I can. Um, so, yeah, it's confronting, but I will deal with the, you know, the, the bad stuff when the bad stuff lands in my lap. And I guess the really important thing is I've done that talk so many times with so many different families, and it's different for every family, but it never gets any easier no, doing that. that talk. But, you know, what we really try and get across to people is our team is there and we become part of people's families because, you know, people come and see us in clinic every couple of months. If their child's in hospital, they see us every day. And mm. you know, we have two amazing nurses who take phone calls all day from our families. And, you know, there's one of us on call every single night, 24 hours a day to take phone calls. So people really do sort of become we all become part of a big family. Like and crazy, right? Just to have that voice to kind of guide them through. Must yeah. Be and it's it's really, it's a, such a privilege mm. to work with families. But, you know, we're always there for you guys and we take this journey with you. Mm. Um, and that's the thing that you know, we always keep coming back to is, you know, when things are good, when things are bad, we're always here for you guys. Mm. Yeah, with Nath, with um, having CF yourself, now you're an adult, what advice would you give uh, families out there that have kids with CF? Obviously, you know, as you've grown up with it, what advice have you taken on board, would you say, that's helped you? Yeah, I think uh, all the messages I try and get across in not just for CF, but, you know, for all, I think knowledge is power. So probably understanding your condition and how it impacts you and your family. So everyone has a different, uh, I guess, is impacted differently. So um, understanding the medications, you know, your excess, whatever helps you um, get to the best condition um, you can be. Uh, and then... Uh, exercise is the best medicine. Um, I know that's probably not the right thing to say in terms oh, no. of but take I, it. I was literally at Pilates yeah. right before I came. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, missed, I missed that class yeah. though. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just exercise for me is something that just makes me feel good. Um, and I know it's good for my health, but also mentally as well. Mm. It's just a great outlet. So 
those are the two things because otherwise, you know, I, I, got, I get questions all the time, like thousands of questions from people um, around the world saying, oh, what, what exercise is specific, all this sort of stuff. And it's like, you have to find out what works for you. Mm. Like, what works for me might, not, so, yeah, might, might not work for it's you. It's so true. So yeah. just, yeah, knowledge is power and exercise is best medicine. Those are the two messages I, I like to pass across. Yeah, look after your temple. For life too. It is. Yep. Uh, what about foods? Is there any foods like obviously? Because I, I think on top of it, mucus. Okay, so what's bad? Because every time if I'm eating KFC or eating bad food, the mucus of just the KFC and I don't even have CF is kind of like oh, you know. <laughs> I, 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 think that's, I think that's grease, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I call it mucus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now they're just giving you that, like, it's very important to look after your body. Yeah. Well, I feel what, greasy. Look after your body, do a lot of exercise. <laughs> well, I eat KFC. You know? <laughs> what? No, because well, obviously um, diet must be, have you noticed anything with diet? Like, you change your diet around and... and um... Yeah, yeah, I, I have digestive um, issues. So in the last couple of years, my, uh, you'll probably have to come with the, the scientific words here, but... I've now had to go onto Creon tablets. So oh, I've had, okay. started having gut issues. Yeah. So yeah, I've started now trying a whole bunch of different things. But um, my thing is everything in moderation. Mm. Um, I'm probably living... Have you ever tried like super strict diet stuff, like completely taking out sugar, like only eating meat? Have you tried those kind of things? Uh, n- not to that extreme. No, no. Mm. I'm, I'm just a moderation guy. I yeah. just like yeah, food. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see how and you it, do with it, that. It could actually be potentially quite dangerous for someone with Digesty. CF to do that because oh, really? they because they have so much trouble absorbing the fat um, and calories in their food. Right. Um, we often put people on like a really high fat, high protein, high sugar diet so they actually get enough calories, oh, especially a lot of little kids. I've got a funny story about that one, right? So <laughs> okay. that actually comes back to your one before. KFC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <not, laughs> similar chain of restaurants. It's it the grease. It's the grease. It, it got you. It was, actually, it was actually McDonald's. But when I was younger, um, obviously with the digestive mm. issues, the doctors actually said, oh, you know, you're un- he's underweight. So to mum and dad. Mm. So what do we do? Uh, high fat, um, high, uh, yeah. High calories, high salt. Calories, that. So, yeah, every afternoon we went to Macca's drive through and it was just hot chips, um, especially on hot days because the salt secretion, you lose yeah, a lot of salt. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'd be going there. And then I think it was about three or four months later, we went back to the clinic and the doc goes, yeah, you've overdone it a little bit. <laughs> so You're I came, like living suicide. He's like, yeah. he's like uh, you've yeah. actually got a gut. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, no, you're fine now. So I was quite a chubby kid, like, growing up. Um you know, in that regard, but that's why you yeah. played rugby. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Rugby's is a great game. It's, it's a game for all shapes and sizes. Okay, anyone yeah. can play. I know. Yeah, so. I was I was on the wing. <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's really interesting you say that because um, now with the new cystic fibrosis drugs, they they've really changed how long a lot of people are living for, and now we're starting to see people in their forties and fifties go on got heart disease because mm. we've been giving them these high fat oh, diets, wow. all this, and all of a sudden we're like. We've got to completely change what we do. Like some you of these, you got two years, all right? So yeah, figure it out. No more macros for two years yeah. for you. Um, to bring it back as well to the hospital. So we are raising money for the hospital. That yeah. is the ultimate outcome. Uh, as again, mm-hmm. you know, the hospitals don't stop when you're tired. When someone's sick, they keep moving. They keep looking after people. Um, and with the cystic fibrosis team, uh, obviously I'm on board. Mm-hmm. Everyone's on board to try to raise some money. So if you're listening, you, they will we'll put a link, obviously, in my um, Instagram as well. But um, go to the Perth Children's Hospital Foundation. Yeah, so our hashtag is PCHFWA. Um, they've got a Facebook page and you can get all the information on there on how to donate to us. Um, and I think we might get some more info from hopefully from our well, we'll have comms person. Yeah, yeah, we'll have all the links in the bio. Um, how do they find me? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Down right. at he Macca's. moves a lot. <laughs> he moves be, around. He came from Sydney. Yeah. He was over at Rhino. He's that's, living his best life, uh, I'm this guy. I'm living my best life at the moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, look, I'm not hugely active on socials from, uh, from that sense. It's more just some mates and sharing mm. some of my rendezvous or what I'm up to. But um, yeah. Yeah, no, I actually did a uh, 65K for 65 Roses run the other week just to raise some money. Um, just a light yeah. 65K. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had to pull up after that. Yeah, I was uh, sort of yeah. a bit of a sore back. So, um, oh, God. Yeah. No, look, I, I don't find... Um, I've been the National Ambassador for Cystic Fibrosis Australia since 2010, mm. and I don't feel like my role is to necessarily 
go out and raise money. Uh, I feel like my role is to raise the profile, mm -hmm. and I guess doing that through what I've achieved in life, and uh, it does sort of give me a story to talk about and try and inspire and motivate people to to then go to Birth right. Children's Hospital Foundation and donate for what cause and whatnot. So I just love getting behind um, great great causes like this. Obviously, close to my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how people bring people together. But um, what if people want to be, book you for a speaking engagement? Yeah. Or if they're just like yeah, having if, trouble yeah, with their yeah, missus. Or if everyone just, he, he will yes, legit yes, go to your house. He just needs a nice smooth voice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he will just yeah, talk sorry, in a babe. sexy voice. I'm like, yeah. Oh, geez, this is really taking a turn. He will be not even getting booked for CF talks. Should we just have him say like sexy phrases? Yeah. How about hashtag PCHFWA? All right, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Nate's going to give us the... Give us the hashtag. I'll yeah. give us the hashtag, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you can, I've got a website, nathanchars.com.au, and, um, yeah, I'll just go there. I still Details. remember the first time I met you, and um, I was at the casino. Yeah. What were you doing there? Oh, uh, yeah, spending the GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, um, <laughs> uh, no, do, do, all right, this, this podcast has got jokes, all right, guys? All right? And uh, Nath came over and, um, you know, introduced himself to me, and this was after, I think it was the second season of Survivor, maybe. Um and and nicest thing, you know, because obviously, like, I'm I'm a big rugby league, rugby union fan as well. So when you came over and introduced me and told you your story, I was, um, you know, I kind of ran back and told Mary and stuff. And we've stayed in contact since. And, um, it's, yeah, as I said, I'm super happy to see you do so well now with the CEO uh, of rugby and and your podcast. It's good to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm giving, giving you a pat on the back. Thanks, mate. Just a virtual pat yeah. on the back. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, we really appreciate you guys coming in today. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, thank I am you. really, I'm, I'm hot on you doing the hashtag though for us. We're <laughs> yeah. not letting that go. What is the official hashtag? It's PCHFWA. PCHFWA. Come on, Nate. Give it. I want your best bedroom hashtag. <laughs> oh, he doesn't his, have a mic. Take to, your shirt off for this one. He's, he's, he's got a lapel, so he can't step into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, just just give it to me. Yeah. All right. So uh, go, go lead me in here somewhere. Uh, Someone's going to ask me the question. What's the hashtag name? Hashtag PCHFWA. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that is so Holy You're welcome. <laughs> is there, someone oh, turned the air gun off? Is someone turned the air gun off? Jeepers, creepers. <laughs> Never made Feeling it. Feeling kind of emasculated now. Cystic fire. Both are so sexy. One last thing I wanted to know, right, is now we know cystic fibrosis, uh, when you are both diagnosed with it, it there's that movie called Six Feet Apart. So that mm -hmm. you can catch another person's cystic fibrosis bacteria. lung bacteria yep. and could potentially kill you, which is quite interesting because mm. you wouldn't go down the park, you'd play with another kid, you don't even know, and next minute, um, you know, they're hurting each other. Nath, when you get a girlfriend <laughs> or a, have you got a girlfriend? Uh, yeah, are you, are you single uh, with that I'm sexy single. voice? Whoa. Whoa. Holy shit. shit. Okay, all right. So, um, so where do can you, people find when me? You... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I thought you went active yeah. on social media. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, not active on social media other social than media. Tinder. <laughs> okay. um, when you uh, find a partner, um, do you actually even ask that question? Or do you like... Or if you found the one, so for instance, yeah. would you be like, if you found out they had the CFG, would you be like, look, this ain't going to work out? Or you would just be like, it doesn't matter. Jeez, um, that is, yeah. that oh, is yeah, a God. deep question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I'm finishing with a real deep like, question. No, I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, look, it's actually, it's a really interesting question. When mm. I talk about CF in a public forum, I find it very easy to talk about. But I actually find it quite difficult to have those personal conversations because... There, are, there is a lot more going on underneath the surface that mm. people don't know about. Mm. And, I mean, I guess like yourself, Luke, you've got a public profile. People mm. can Google you, find out information. And um, I've got, you know, the similar thing. You can go on the website, uh, the internet and Google, and then people see CF, and it's uh, not a great outcome, and it's a very textbook answer where, again, it impacts people differently. And I've been judged in relationships um, oh. before. So, you know, I... I I'm not going to go into yeah, it. Yeah, that's but, scary. A but it, bit, it, does, it is something that, because um, I mean, it's baggage, right? Mm. And how does it affect you? Or oh, does this mean blah, blah, blah? So that's actually one thing I, I struggle to, to, to chat with on a personal level. It's, I guess it's that vulnerability of what's next and um, how, it affect, how to, it will impact their life, the relationships and all that. So long story short, no, I don't ask people if that's the first <laughs> question that comes up. But yeah, it, ha it has, does play a role in relationships. And, oh, I, I can yeah. only imagine. 
Um, yeah, Thanks, okay. just, yeah, yeah, just, just yeah, like no, just well, it's, it is interesting, and I always oh. wondered because you know, like, um, my, well, my daughter's gonna have to deal with it, you know, if she meets someone and gets along and then finds out they've got CF or whatever. It's just, it's an interesting topic, you know. Yeah. Imagine he rocks up. Oh no, yeah. an old man. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus. Jesus. Like, no. my first wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Was it like a 30 to 86 there? No, that wasn't oh, God. <laughs> Someone Mate. was very similar in body stature <laughs> and deep voiceness. <laughs> but well, I think mean, that's about time to wrap it up. Yeah, 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 that's hey, it. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, thank Adelaide with us and Nathan Charles. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. It was so lovely. And I'm like totally fangirling over here. I was like, I get to meet them. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Sweet. guys. <laughs> well, there you go. That's our first guest in the bag. First guest, yeah. Well, technically not first, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, Sorry I'm... about that. But now we're having guests on. We're really hitting our stride here. Mm. We appreciate you guys listening. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. I think that was, uh, I hope you enjoy it. This is CF month. CF month. Well, I, I don't know. I just made up. Oh, I think it's. Week? I think CF it's. Week. I think it's quarter. Nearly. CF quarter. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're real full full bottle on this CF business. But uh, if you if you can donate some money, Perth Children's Hospital, they're doing amazing stuff, and we know a lot of you guys are listening on the east coast. Mm. Probably think, oh, why am I donating to a Perth hospital? But it is a very important charity. Very important. Charity. Because all that research they're doing here gets shared across across the globe. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you know someone that has cystic fibrosis, uh, you could be helping them. Yeah, so support them. So, um, okay. Anything else you want to talk about before we close it out? Uh, Not really. I think that's, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, what yeah. Do you reckon? Are we good? Uh, I think I, we're done. I feel way better life from last week than those coffees. <laughs> oh man, you were having heart palpitations Dude, I, last I'm week. I'm telling you. I'm ne- cold wondering brew. why it was so hype last week. Cold brew, I thought was you know like when you ask for espresso, I'm like, yeah, no, no, one espressos, they will you know kick my ass. But then all of a sudden, the cold brews, I thought, oh, that would be <laughs> pretty chill, you know, no. pretty light. Little did I know. See, I can down like three of those no dramas. Oh really? Yeah. Damn. No you were already You're up like here, a crackhead or something. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got any more of them cold rules? <laughs> it was good. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate you guys listening, and uh, you can find us at who authorized this underscore authorizes with an S, not a Z. My American friends, that's how we spell it over here. Make sure you tell your grandparents. Make sure you tell your mum and dad. Make sure you tell your nephew and niece. Your kids to tune on in well, to Who Authorised This. <laughs> this has been Who Authorised This. Yeah. <laughs> who did authorise it? Peace. Peace. <laughs>